Hello, friends, and welcome to another single serving tabletop adventure from Queen's Court Games. I am Aubrey, and today we are playing more Kids on Brooms by Jonathan Gilmore, Doug Lewandowski, and Spencer Stark. Uh, we'll roll on into things in just a moment, but uh, let me introduce my cast. Uh, we'll start over here with uh, Jess. What up? My name's Jess. Uh, you she, they pronouns, and I'm playing Caster Saros. He uses he, him pronouns. Uh, and then we have Nala. Hi, everybody. My name is Nala or Jay. My pronouns are they, them. And today I am playing Faro Jin, who uses he, they, and she pronouns. All right. And we have Kai. Hi, everybody. I'm Kai. I use he, they, and she pronouns. And I'm here to play Renee Asher Gerard Laval, who uses he, they pronouns. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, and lastly, but not leastly, we have Alyssa. Hi y'all, I'm Alyssa, I use they them pronouns, and I'm playing Rima Thompson, who goes by Tom and uses they, he, or she pronouns. You can find the links to everyone's social media by sending exclamation point cast to the chat, um, or you can also use exclamation point scenario if you're interested in picking up a copy of the game for yourself. Uh, the stream is sponsored by Hunter's Entertainment and Odd Duck Dice. We'll be giving away a set of custom transcribed dice made by Odd Duck during each episode. They are beautiful. I've seen the photos on Twitter. Uh, and use hashtag dice to enter. The winner will be chosen at the, at the end of each session. Um, the cast and I have discussed our lines and veils in advance uh, via session zero and have agreed to a code of conduct to ensure a safe and respectful environment. But we want you to be safe as well. You can use exclamation point safety to see the content warnings for the episode. With all of that said, students, are you ready? Yes. Yes, question mark. <laughs> Good enough. Are we going to die today? Uh, yep, that's your intro. Yeah, and we'll we'll start off uh, everything by getting a bit of a recap as to what happened last time. Last time on the Mysteries of Ravenswood, we reconvened our session back in the dorm room that Renee and Faro share. Um, the whole group kind of reconvened and talked about what we just saw that night. Um, we mentioned how uh, Professor Talis and Andreas, the headmaster, both used to work for the Hunter's Guild um, in talking about what we should do about the book that we found and the, uh, quite frankly, terrifying information contained within. Uh, I, or Faro, suggested setting up a meeting to talk with Talus uh, uh, himself, given that Talus is Faro's mentor. Um, the group sort of agrees that that is a plan, um, but does not want Faro to go alone. So we agree to meet in the park, in a public place, where the other three can eavesdrop, or at least just make sure that Talus isn't going to disappear me, like our friend Juniper, who is missing. The next morning, on the way to our magical creatures class, Tom passes um, in the main hall and sees Captain Elias Gore, who is the head of the Holy Blood, talking to our headmaster. They're talking very quietly. However, Tom is very sneaky and walks by uh, in order to eavesdrop and catches the tail end of the conversation, uh, specifically our headmaster telling Gore that he has instructed Talus to lay low. And Gore asks, quote, how did he lose something like that? End quote. Very sus. In our Magical Creatures class, we learn about the corpse mods, which are these giant mods that eat corpses. Our lovely uh, GM noted that it is a good way to get rid of a body, which I feel like is only a detail that one includes if it is important. Big fear. 
Um, <laughs> during the class, Castor overhears uh, some of our classmates talking about what happened in the library. It's mostly rumors. No one really knows what happened. And we all would like to keep it that way, at least until we figure out for sure what actually happened. Um, we also meet Hestohunder. Am I saying that correctly? They are giant wolf-like dogs. Um, we, uh, during the class, uh, Faro writes a letter to Talus, um, under the guise of being finally ready to talk about the accident that happened to him a couple months ago. Um... Uh, what else happens during this class? Tom produces an illusionary illusion il, illusory copy of the book um, and tries to get me to switch uh, with the real copy that I have, um, but I refuse. Um, my my cat who took the letter to Talus returns with a reply, instructing me to meet Talus at the drunken troll. Um, I don't tell anyone about this information. <laughs> Um, the rest of the class is about, uh, nature and, and change. Is nature evil and what happens when creatures change? Questions asked by Renee. Um, the professor mentions that she's studying a dangerous creature nicknamed the Schism. Uh, anyways, after class, I'm walking towards the drunken troll past the park that we were supposed to meet in, much to the disappointment and confusion and maybe fear of my three fellows. Um, they disguise themselves to varying levels of, um, effectiveness. Uh, Castor flies super high in the sky and uses dim light and shadows to hide himself. Uh, Rene literally cloaks himself in shadows and follows along. And Tom tries to disguise uh, to disguise her face and just gets hotter. Now at uh, uh, at the tavern, I go in to talk to Talus. I tell the professor that I have found his book um, and sort of starts asking him what really happened um in this conversation talus says that he surrendered his books which is kind of a stretch of the truth um and in a in 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 bleh. i ask him if i can help him with whatever he's working on because I already help him a lot, and Vado was trying to get an in with uh, the professor. Um, he seems... At least, he did not tell me no. <laughs> um, after I leave a... Uh... Sorry. Where? I lost my spot. Renee has snuck into the tavern and has overheard this entire conversation. After I leave, a person with gray purple skin and stark white hair walks into the tavern. His name is Akos, and he is someone that Renee knows. Uh, Renee leaves um, and walks out really, really quickly. Um, and Tom, who is hanging around, uh, watching outside, um, sees Renee leave uh, very quickly in a tight and controlled fury. Meanwhile, uh, Faro walks to the park, um, where Castor catches up with me and tries to comfort me. Um, Later, the entire group reconvenes at this park. Renee is incredibly angry and tells Tom that Akos is someone that is really bad for the professor to be associating with. Uh, Renee tells us that his father's associated with bad people, and one of them has just shown up to see Talus. Um, Castor talks about how good people don't exist and we have a conversation about the complications of morality renee reveals that that he left home for school so that he would not have to be complicit in his family's bad choices tom goes back to the tavern to eavesdrop on akos and talus 
and overhears Akos asking Talus uh, for what he promised him. And a quote, I don't want to stop plans because you couldn't hold on to a fucking book. Um, Talus promising, I'm working on it, I'll get it handled, and no one can know about this conversation. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, after all of this, I, uh, we all walk out of the park, but not before Faro consumes some light in front of their friends, something that they're witnessing for the first time. And that is where we ended. That was kind of long, but a lot of things happened. And hopefully, now that you're caught up, uh <laughs> yeah we well, can move forward <laughs> yes so let's pick it up right where we left off with you all watching Fado do this how do you react is that new or uh Fado looks incredibly I think guilty and embarrassed and um I think Faro blushes a little bit or it would be blush I think it just looks like the darkening of his skin around the areas that you would blush um and Faro says well this this is what's happened to me it's Obviously, didn't used to be like this. There's a problem. And Renee looks to Castor and Tom. Oh, no, 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 no problem. Not a problem. It's a problem for you. It's not a problem for me. I believe that Tom is at the pub still. I think you were walking back to join the group when this happened. So I think you're the only one that doesn't see this, but you definitely come into awkward vibes. And the light is out that we're standing next to. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It was always like that. Yep. Good. Anyway, shall we? And if you look closely, Renee has actually palmed his wand for that entire conversation. (laughs) <laughs> fear <laughs> hmm. uh, and Faro while um, saying what little he did to Castor uh, was looking at Renee the whole time when explaining or at least trying to explain or put into words what happened to him I think until he directly addressed Castor his eyes were locked on Faro Um, and for as pale as he is he went a little paler realizing that Castor had seen that we have things to do I believe you said we were going to go shopping yes yep shopping it is I love shopping alright Okay. Uh, let's take the long way. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Hi, Tom. Oh, there they are. Acting strangely. Um, I have something I need to take care of. You can do the shopping, right? Um, sure. You, yes. Sure, you don't want to come. We're having so much fun together. We are. Yeah, I'm yes, just going to back are. away from yeah. these vibes. <laughs> so much fun. Okay, have fun. Be safe. Contact us if well. you need us. Yep. Mm-hmm. Faro is going to turn and walk towards whatever store. Where where were we going? I didn't write it down. 
Were we headed we're... to the the place with all the ingredients? Was it that one? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think we didn't. We did we want to do the two stores that she went to, the bookstore and the mm-hmm. um. Yes, but I think we were coffee. directly headed to um the mystical mysterium. The, yeah, yes, the mystical mysterium. Gotcha. Besides, Elric owes me a few favors. Let's go. I I like to imagine uh, as you start walking, um in the direction that we all were walking, uh, Faro is going to grab your wrist and pull you to go the different way, the long way, the way that avoids m- the most street lamps as possible. Yeah, um, I, think, I think we walk, yeah. I think he catches Renee's wrist, like just as Renee's like storming off and kind of very obviously forgets that we're supposed to be taking the long way. I go follow them. Be safe. Okay. Like, hurry after them. Yeah. So, it's not far to the Elric's mystical mysterium. Uh, and it's... It's a little... tawdry on the outside. It's... A lot of it's for show, you know, there are people who are not part of the academy that pass through and come buy ingredients in here. Uh, and, you know, it's a bit of showmanship, you know, got, you got to stand out for your competition. Uh, you're all well aware of uh, it. As you enter, you kind of hear the little jingle of the bell above the door. Uh, and you all see this sort of very flamboyant man. Uh, he has this... Um, magically enhanced bright pink hair and uh is wearing you're relatively sure it's silk but it's beautiful and of a lot of colors as he stands behind this counter he is currently looks like putting away some books uh and just goes well if it isn't some of my favorite students what can i get you today elric and before we entered, Renee actually mm-hmm. stops and like fully straightens mm-hmm. all of his clothes so that he almost looks like a like living portrait of a young gentleman. Um, straightens his hair, tucks the bit the streak of white that has recently appeared in his hair behind his ears, and pulls at the bottom of his waistcoat so that he is just immaculate looking. And then he he had entered and greets Elric with a grin and a small gentlemanly wave. Hi. Bottle, Caster, Renee, what do I owe the pleasure today? Need anything for alchemy or uh, any of those other classes? We're here looking for some things for school, obviously. And um, if you wouldn't mind, I, I have some curiosities. I, I think Faro was taking some very interesting notes um, about alchemy in particular, a project that we were working on. Yes, yeah, so what, what can I do for? <clears throat> um... Uh, uh, I, and Faro sort of steps forward, kind of like looking at Renee, like what, 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 what am I doing? Uh, and says, um, well, Renee and I were working on some, um, research to, to research together. Um, and um it was more advanced um it was to do with the um you know the that other project that we were working on with juniper yes yeah um very advanced stuff um and i i believe juniper came to see you uh and looks between you all and goes 
Yes, Juniper did come to see me. She didn't mention you, but eh, what again? The girl is a little, uh, a little scatterbrained sometimes. So, uh, oh, um, what she was asking wasn't the normal kind of thing you, you guys need. Again, this is advanced independent study, um, and she was just looking out for all of our, um, you know. Good work. I also, um, it's, um, independent small group study. Um, I'm sure I, I know of to talk to you. Um, Professor Talis is, um, uh, my mentor and, um, we're hoping to help, help him with, um, his, research and um, I, I wasn't sure what part um, w- what uh, part um, J- Juniper was you know uh, and I'm looking I'm looking to Renee which part Ren- um, Juniper was was looking for D- do you remember what I she put- calming for. hand on just in the small of your back just like a feather light touch oh renee I makes know. the most awkward side wins because alchemy is so not his speed and he's like i don't know but only kind of looks at faro just gives shoots her a little like oh, i'm sorry <laughs> you are you trying to remember the specific ingredient you need or um yes um juniper we all were um you know group projects assigned specific things to look into and um juniper's fallen ill and um we're picking up uh her part of the project and i just want to see how far she got it's sort of like wrinkled sprout a little bit it just goes um Sorry to be sad to hear about Juniper, uh, but you know. Oh, she, she'll be fine. Girl Just needs to take a rest. The fool. Yeah. Works yeah. very hard. Yes. Um, give, give me a second. I think, I think yeah, she, she, she did come in and get something. Uh, and it's just like, just make yourselves comfortable. I think it's in the back with the rest of my deliveries. I haven't unpacked some things yet. Uh, and, you know, gets out from behind the, uh, the counter and starts heading towards the back. Faro, like as soon as uh, Elric leaves, you like both of you can see Faro's shoulders relax. Um, I think Faro is, especially to adults older than him that they really respect, they have a hard time. Um, they have a hard time like outright lying, <laughs> um, especially like. <laughs> The, the difference with how Faro interacted with Talus last last session was, I think, just due to Faro's. Um, Faro knows Talus way better, and thusly was able to lie. Little white lies, a little bit easier, but th- this is a bold faced lie, and <laughs> Faro is yeah. clearly not comfortable. <laughs> I think Renee looks up at him, talks a little smile now that Elric is gone. You want to do some shopping? Y- yes. Perhaps we need um, ingredients for the next alchemy class. And other some other things. things, and I think I owe you some um, some moss dust. Yes. Sorry, am I intruding? No, Casta. <laughs> um, I could go. No, I could absolutely no. go. No, Casta, do you do you need anything? No, I don't need anything. I'm perfectly well stocked. And that's Are a you? lie. I I usually just use the ingredients that they have in the classroom. You sure? My treat. Come on. Okay, as long as you're sure. I'm sure. And Faro just leans over to Castor and just says, Renee practically begs me 
to let him pay for me, so I would just take it. Otherwise, they are not going to drop it. They're not dropping it. Well, do you know Sid? I do like a man who dotes. So yeah, uh, Caster yeah. W- would see Renee like walk through the aisles and grabs like uh, Faro. You would know that he has some like staples for the work that he does out of school in quotes. Um, and he starts to collect specifically those ones. Caster, you would probably know that these are not ingredients for alchemy class or any of the other classes you share with Renee. Uh, so I was sensing some history between you and Elric, Renee. Kind of. Can I get to spend money a lot? Uh, is that what it is? Because you you did the whole, you know. Yes. I'm. I don't know if you know this, but people respect you more when you dress well. What's good is respect. All right, that's a. You know, you have the respect of a lot of people at school, right? I think that's different. Is it? Yeah, of course. There's a difference between respect that is owed because of the person that you were born as and respect that is given based on the person you are. You're right. You're absolutely right. In any case, I do understand. I just was just curious. I have one of those. I want the other one. Ah. At one this point, Faro <laughs> comes back with all of the ingredients um, for the antidote that we learned to make in class. Oh, um, that's clever. We should do more of those. Uh, and, and and you can see that Fado grabbed enough for the four of us. Um, and uh, it's kind of like, I think it's a lot of stuff. Um, I don't, I can go back in my notes, but there's, a, you know, a decent amount of ingredients. And then we're getting mm. four times the amount, obviously, because we used the supply in class. Um, or Fado used his supply in class. Um, so it's restocking and getting more. And just kind of appears between the two of you talking with armload of stuff. I'm not going to insult you by asking if you can afford all of that, but it does seem a bit excessive. I, I, I can't. Caster can. and points at Renee. I was, I was, I was, I was asking Renee. I was yeah, asking yeah. Renee. Oh, yeah. Caster, yeah. <laughs> the um, you know the 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 thing that you were saying about being born into it. Yes respectability and being a useful person are two different things. You can be born into money and be absolutely useless or you can use the money for something. I can't argue with that, can I? Good. As that happens, you hear the door from the back open and you hear the, the voice of Elric go, it just took me a moment, but I definitely found it. Uh, and comes back with this package underneath his arm. And just like, yeah, it was never kind of uncommon what Juniper was asking for. Like, I had to, like, reach out to some hunters I know. Like, they're over in Centelia. Like, Chimera's not natural to Aradon. Right, the Chimera. That's what it was. Yeah, and puts this box uh, on the counter um, and he goes Juniper already paid me for it if you're going to pick it up and take it to her you know, you're good and just, we'll, we'll bring up whatever what else whatever else you got. Wonderful. All of this and Renee mm-hmm. gestures to Castor and mm-hmm. Faro. Yep. Yeah. And we will do a capitalism. <laughs> <laughs> do a yes. capitalism. Listen, money, money, see, money, money, you'll money. You'll see Renee like produce all of the money. Just uh, like an unreal mm. amount of money uh, out of a very like simple little coin purse, <laughs> essentially. Mm-hmm. But yes, you have bought the ingredients and picked up 
the chimera venom <laughs> that uh, Juniper had ordered. Which uh, was in the book for those of you who yep. don't remember from for those of you at home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for those of you at home from session one in my notes, there's instructions for how to turn people into ghouls. And Horrible. in order to do that, you need two things chimera venom, and there's a little ding sound as it appears on your Amazing. screen. <laughs> and also scorpion tail, which we have yet to find. Yeah. Back to the game. <laughs> Incredible. Um, Renee also like adds a little bit of extra money to Elric. And uh, I think this is an ongoing thing where Renee specifically has uh, tr been buttering Elric up for like as long as they've been in school. <laughs> Elric is a smart businessman. He takes yeah. the money. Yeah. He, he's probably tried to give it back before, and he yeah. knows that you won't take it back, so he's just like, well. Yeah. And then uh, Rene tucks the Chimera Venom under his little arm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's this box that's like, meh. It's okay. a small box size. I was about to say, I can carry mm -hmm. it, but it's fine. Mm -hmm. You can carry it. <laughs> yeah. Short man gonna carry it. <laughs> sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right then, shall we? Uh, and as you oh, like, Tom's gone to carry the box. Uh, you know, you notice it feels kind of cool. It's been like magically enchanted to keep, like, like essentially a refrigeration unit to keep keep it fresh. Uh, and also, as you ask what uh, Tom has been doing, I think it's a great question to ask. What has Tom been doing? So above table, I am 98% sure I left off still at the tavern spying, doing that spying scene on Talus and um, Ikos. But if not, I have returned to the tavern um, and I would like to confront Talus, please. Okay. Yeah, he is still in the corner. He's not grating. He currently has a, a glass of what appears to be wine in front of him. Uh, and his hair looks like it's just been running his hands through it. Don't drink while you're grating, sir. Um, I think that Tom is always kind of like, looks always sort of like loose and lax. And they're still sort of relaxed as they move towards Talus's table. But there's now something predatory in the way that they approach. And he will sit down in the booth across from Talus and kick his legs up next to him, um, sort of blocking him in. <laughs> uh, and greet him. Um, fancy he, seeing you here, Professor. He looks up from these piles of papers, this half-finished glass of wine, and just looks you over and just goes, I mean, why wouldn't I be here? Well, I think you'd be at work, but gestures at the papers. I'm, um, as you can clearly see, I am working and yeah, taking some personal time, a bit of a day off, you know, what do the kids call it these days, a mental health day? I, I suppose you would need it, wouldn't you? What with everything happening. Uh, certainly, um, tensions are very tight in the city. There's a lot going on. Oh, I meant personally. I mean, that man you were talking to, that's trouble, Professor. And kidnapping a student? Hiding her away somewhere? And whatever it is you're planning, I mean, your protege... What is it exactly that you're planning with Faro? Why did we let you go off on your own? <laughs> I had a thought to go with them and I just I just yeah. didn't. I just didn't Third do it. wheeled instead. Yep. And you immediately, as you start talking, you notice the change. You notice the sort of the shoulders square up a little bit and just goes. 
Well, I certainly know a threat when I hear one. I'm not here to cause you problems, Professor. I'm here to help. Enlighten me. How? I mean, this seems like something difficult to handle alone, and there's no reason for you to work against us. We can help get Echoes off your back. Just a small favor for another favor. Yes, that is certainly how I got myself into this trouble to start with. Let's say I agree. What kind of favor do you need? I can certainly um, pass you in my class for the rest of the year. Um, or um, do you need poisons or any other kind of alchemical things made? I can make those as well. Um puts on just an absolutely angelic smile um, and says, well, I mean, we'd need Junie back, of course, but that's a given. Beyond that, you're aware, I'm sure, I mean, you must be aware of so much with your connections. There's a tower in the city, a locked tower with some precious material inside. I had hoped to figure out how to enter myself, but since this opportunity came... Yes, I am familiar with that tower. It has been like that for about 30 years. I, I don't know what you expect I can do about this tower. On. Surely alchemy is good for something. You can blow open the door if nothing else. I honestly, I had expected that you would know who had locked it up, but if not, yes, I'm familiar with the wizard. And I mean, he is sadly incredibly dead. Um, and any secrets to unlock that tower definitely died with him. I have seen all sorts of adventurers attempt to break in to that tower without with little luck. Um, any of the ones that did manage to get past the door were um, brutally slaughtered by whatever defenses are in that tower. Can you say anything more about those defenses or about uh, the wizard himself? The wizard was incredibly paranoid thinking that somebody was out to get him, and quite possibly somebody was. Uh, especially knowing what he had as in that tower. Little paranoia would have done you some good, wouldn't it? But... All right. If you can't open the tower a uh, favor held for another time um, wait with bated breath see whatever you ask Tom sort of lets his foot slide off the opposite booth and gives a salute and says wonderful will you be back on campus tomorrow we shall see. I have some things to take care of first. And are those things related to this deal, or is it simply and to gestures at the work? Well, yes, I have more than my share of papers to grade. And Look, if you bring me the book, I need the book. I'll do what I can. In the office of the headmaster, there's an item that may be able to get you in there.
you bring me the book, I will trade you this key. It's not a guarantee, but this key is supposed to unlock most any lock. It can only be used once. Tom, I think, smiles, just cat who got the canary, and nods and says, shall I send you a message once I have the book, or? Yes, send me a message, or if it is very late, I will be at my home. You can find me there, or tomorrow at my office should be in my office tomorrow. All right. Have a lovely rest of your evening, Professor. And they will go out to meet the rest of the gang. Mm -hmm. as, uh, as you turn around and leave, you don't see this, but he just knocks back the rest of that wine glass and just sort of raises his hand for another. And yeah, we'll go back to the rest of the group. You are just exiting the Mysterium. How am I supposed uh, to be normal after that? I don't what? know. That is a you question. I, yeah. Why did we let Tom go off on her own? Listen, he got results. That's all I care about. <laughs> so strong. So strong a choice. I, I fear them immensely. Same. I'm glad Tom's on our side. <laughs> the, the 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 feelings I am feeling cannot be described by something as simple as fear. <laughs> <laughs> Mark me down as scared and horny. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Renee's holding this weirdly cold box. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you want me to carry yep. that? Oh. Oh, okay. Fine then. <laughs> been holding it for a minute. I was just offering. No, it's it's all right. I've got it. Okay. So to the bookstall then. Yes. Oh. Books. It's not my favorite thing, but lead the way. I'll follow you. Unless you don't need me. I really feel like I'm not needed here. <laughs> Casta. I'm just, just saying. You need to be needed. Yes. Terribly so. Would you like to be the face man at Twilight Booksellers? Uh, book's not really my thing. And I really highly doubt that anybody would this is a people be thing. walking in there. Casta, this is a people thing. It's a people problem. I would need to see some books. You're a student at Ravenswood. All of us need books. Okay. I'll give it a go. Do my best. What are we looking for exactly? Just the books that Jenny checked out? That she was looking to purchase. I think she was looking to procure, an, procure a specific book. Okay. Sure. Uh, okay. The the bookseller is pretty much just right across the street yeah. from the the Mysterium, and it is the exact opposite of the Mysterium. You see, it is it is it is everything is perfect down to all of the books have their places. They must be in their places. Everything is neat and orderly. Uh, and as you open the door, there's also the sound of the bell, and you see all of these rows and rows of beautiful, well-kept books. And you know every single one is in the perfect order. And it is you will always be able to find what you need here. Uh, and sort of moving between the rows is this sort of wayfish-looking elven woman. You see on her skin there are these, like, golden marks, like, tattoos. Uh, and she has this sort of 
golden blonde hair that is usually tied up in a very, very tight bun behind her hair. And she looks over at all of you and just goes, welcome in students. Uh, let me know if you need to find anything. Uh, actually, yes, I do. Um, if you wanted to look around, you could, they say to the other two. Yes, I, I won't be far. I think the whole time that the two of you were bantering about this box and what have you, I think Vado was walking in front of you two. Um, I probably entered the bookstore before you two. Like, I feel like I opened the door and it closed, and then you two opened the door and it closed. Like, that's how far behind the two of you were. Um, and so when you walk in, Faro is um, browsing, but it's, it's, it's kind of that thing that you do where, like, you're waiting for someone, and so you're pretending to look at something that's in front of you, and I'm probably standing in front of a section about, like, I don't know, something completely not... Uh, relevant to Fado at all. Like, I don't know, the self-help section. I don't know, not relevant. Um, and... Uh, it could be. <laughs> and I'm um, just standing there watching the doorway. Um, it's, it's not very subtle at all, but most importantly, I picked a shelf that would hide me from her view so that she wouldn't see me lingering and just watching the door. He's reading, So You Want to Be a Lamplighter. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Hey. That's a funny joke. <laughs> Future uh, me is going to clip that one. <laughs> I might also. Um, yeah. So um, Caster will just kind of put an elbow on the counter and look at this. What is her name? This elfish lady? Do I know her? Never mind. Yeah, I have never stepped foot in this bookstore. <laughs> you know, you would know her name because you'd have to come here and get your books for every semester. That, I sent somebody. I'm just kidding. Okay. Yeah. Uh <laughs> yeah. Uh, the her name is Cynthia Prescott or Miss Prescott or anything like that. Uh hi, Miss Prescott. I'm just here to um pick up a book or a couple of books. I'm not entirely sure. Junie sent me, apparently she came and bought some or was looking for some, but um, yeah, she's busy, so she sent me to pick them up. Uh, yes, uh, the books, do, do you have, uh, give me, give me actually, give me a charms roll real quick. God damn it. <laughs> what do I, I have to roll do this session? What the I, heck? I didn't have to roll the line really heck, poorly. <laughs> It's just the way you phrase no, it. No, this can't be the time that you fail at this. You're so charming. I refuse. Yeah, you're so charming. Bono, by the way, has motioned for Renee to come over to where I am. Yeah, Renee like awkwardly scoots that way. <laughs> I hate this. Um, cool, 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 cool. I rolled a one. Um, oh no. dear. Oh wait, I rolled it on the wrong die. We're fine. Okay. Oh, okay. Re okay. Re okay. Re Second try. Second try. <laughs> I hate this. <laughs> no, Is you that didn't another do it again. one. No. No. My dice no. hate me. Just no. <laughs> no. Here's the part where we implore our lovely GM, who's also the editor, to cut this so we can try again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm blushing. I never blush. This is oh my awful. God. Do you have anything <laughs> to save you? Oh my no, God. No, dude. I rolled a no. one. No. The dice have spoken. All right. What happens? Can I just be like super crass and that she hates my guts instead of her calling out on my love? <laughs> I, I I think it's more of just you, you just, I think you just sort of devolve into awkwardness. Yeah, I don't really come in here a lot, I know. Is it that weird? Yes. Can I, can I, can I try something to save this? Can I try something to sure, save Sure, sure. Um, so, Fado had walked in before the other two, and I think I had greeted her separately and just, mm -hmm. you know, did the whole, like, do you need help? Fado was like, no, I'm just looking, and I disappear. Um, 
but I, I think Faro is going to step out from behind the bookcase. I think I dragged Renee to like the back or whatever, and maybe was planning on talking to Renee or something about what had happened with Castor seeing me consume some light. But hearing how poorly this uh, thing is going, Faro <sighs> turns right back around um, and just very quickly steps out from the bookcase and just says, uh, Oh, um, Junie, right? Uh, yes, we are, um, working on a project together, uh, and, uh, yeah, we had sent Castor to pick up the books. Yep, that's what I'm here for, picking up books for Junie, and, yep. Renee coughs behind Faro, just like, please stop. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you, you, it's just she just sort of lets out this like small like <laughs> students. Uh, yes, I do believe that Juniper ordered some books um, on alchemy, uh, some books on older forms of alchemy uh, and stuff that's not normally taught in school. So. Um, I believe I have them behind the counter over here. And she shelves the last couple of books she's working on and moves around behind the counter. Uh, and she... Faro, mm -hmm. as she's doing that, Faro just says, um, yes, because um, I was going to... I was going to help, help her with uh, the alchemy studies, you know, because that's... That's just kind of looks at Faro like, stop talking. I don't notice. <laughs> uh, just, just always so busy. Uh, they work you so hard at that school. I like learning. Yes, they work us terribly hard. Can we, you know? As these two older, like leather bound books um you know they're they're definitely faded with age uh as she puts them on and sort of like there's like a little slip that's got like uh like the pickup slip uh and she you know, just pulls it out and puts it into where her register is and just goes well junie has already paid for these so um here uh you know i trust that you will all get them to her uh, yes i this, we we will we will take it right to her. And Fado is grabbing like how many books are there? Is it a lot? Or are they like really it's like, big? It's like two to three books. It's like it's like a stack this high or something. It's, but they're it's like kind of thick books. Yeah. Yeah, they're kind of thick. Book. Cool. Fado is taking the stack and immediately is gonna hand it to Castor to carry. <laughs> and carry the books. <laughs> mm -hmm. And but a pack uh, mule. <laughs> <laughs> you carry them so well. Thank uh, you. And, <laughs> <laughs> and then Faro is just going to say, um, uh, thank you. Uh, g go get those back to Judy now, Caster. Yep, I'm going. <laughs> going to go back to looking at what I came here for. Okay. And I'm going to very awkwardly <laughs> spin on my heel and go uh, back towards where... Uh, I was standing originally, and um, Renee, what are you doing? <laughs> Renee I will leave the, the store. <laughs> <laughs> Renee's found a book that actually interests him. Uh, I think it has to do with some like history of the city or something like that that he's just standing there reading. <laughs> like he's actually reading this book at this point because it's been so long. You both discussed. <laughs> um. And so Faro is, so Castor leaves. Faro is going to like very quickly, just uh, I think similar to Renee, find a book that is actually interesting uh, to to them. And they will bring it to Renee and just kind of like bring Renee to the front um, and put the two books on the counter. Uh, and, and Renee's going to pay for them. <laughs> Yep, Renee's gonna pay for yep. them because this is why we came in and we are leaving. <laughs> <laughs> we have you don't just very go to a nice bookstore book just city. to look and then leave. That's like very every nice author ever. So you want to be a lamplighter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yep. And Cynthia makes some sort of comment about how being a lamplighter is a noble profession, yada, yada, yada. Uh, yeah. You buy the books. And... Renee says something, says something to the effect of, like, I looked up to them very much so when I was a young lad. <laughs> 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 something when really I was bad. A young lad. A young lad. My father <laughs> took me into, <laughs> into the, the city, city. <laughs> to see the lamplighter. The lamplighter. <laughs> 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 yeah. That's basically what happens there, and it's not great. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And you all, uh, you take your books, you rejoin Caster outside, and uh, Tom, do you so do you go awkward. to meet up with the rest of the group after after intimidating the professor? Yeah, I imagine that I like check the general store real quick and then make my way to the bookstore to meet up with yeah. them, sort of right as everyone's leaving. So yeah, uh, we're it's around this point that the group comes back together. Caster looks a bit stormy and just kind of like shoves the books into somebody's arms, probably Faro, because nobody else's. You have a box under your arm. Yes, I do. Uh, and and as I, I he approach, kind of just goes, sorry, go ahead. Uh, he, he, go, you go, because he's okay. going to interrogate Caster. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, he kind of just, um, he notices the other books that you have um, and his expression kind of sours a bit. And he says, you know, I really, um, I think that next time you should be the face man. Or somebody else, literally anybody else. What happened in there? You what you mean what happened? I told you that I don't usually go in there. I can't do a report. I don't I can't do a, a thing with people I don't know. Really? Why do you think I get to know everyone? Right. Anyway, it doesn't doesn't matter. Um you get what you needed. I mean and he looks at the spine of the so you want to be a lamplighter book? Yeah. Ooh. Oh yeah, definitely. Interested? Snola is cracked up to be. Do you actually want to be a lamplighter? <laughs> no, not at all. Uh, anyway, we should go. We shouldn't be arguing in front of the shop. Conversing. Right. Sorry about that, Caster. I thought no, I thought it's, differently. It's fine. I hate to let you down. You're right. And, uh, you know, Faro pulled through. Yep. Thank you. Um, again. Oh, hi, Tom. <clears throat> so you managed to get the books. Did you find the... Did you go to the general store already? Um, and Renee pats the box under their arm. Wow. Um, that's all? Great. How did it go with you? There's something else we need to deal with before we um deal with all of these things, I think. And Tom seems a little frantic. So I I listened in on Talus some more. And that um man that you didn't like, Renee, Arcos. the one who was Akos, who was friends with your parents, uh, he gave Talus like a day to get the book back before bad things happen. So I think that, I mean, it sounds I like Talus's problem. He's he's your professor, Baro, um, your mentor, but. I think that not returning it, I mean, that can't be good for Juni. I don't know if it's Talis who has her or this Akos, but... Aubrey, can you remind me, um, mm -hmm. when Faro went to go talk to Talis, because apparently we're all going to talk to Talis, um, but when I was there, uh -huh. you know, like we planned, uh, <laughs> uh, and I offer to help him, what actually, because uh, I'm looking at my notes, I'm trying to remember, like, what came of that agreement, um, specifically, because I know he asked for the book back and I had lied and said, like, I didn't have it or something. Mm-hmm. 
Um, did I say I would bring it back to him or like what was sort of the agreement we came to? Am I waiting for him to t tell me I can help or did he agree that I could help? Um, he said uh, he was big thing is he needs the book back. And I believe, yes, he did say that you could help, but uh, he needs the book back. I think it says you bring him the book, you can help. Okay. Okay. Cool. So, okay, back back to where we were. Um, but I will just say, uh, yes, I agreed that I would bring it to him. And he said he would let me help with whatever he's working on. I hey. thought that maybe I could get in and learn about what his intentions are. He can't keep it, though, unless he intends to copy it and give a, the other version to Akos. I mean, it sounded very tense and very tight and not like he really had leave to be holding on to it. Wait, a Akos wants the book? Yes. Yeah. Did you know that? Rene, about, I mean, before all of this? Do you know anything about the book? Are you asking me? I thought you were asking Rene. Yeah, I was asking Oh, Rene. sorry. What did you ask? Uh, you're asking oh, just, me. Yeah, if he knew about anything about oh, okay. why Echoes would oh. want the book. Um, the thing about Akos is that I am not extremely familiar with with his actual purpose, but um, he's involved in uh, bigger things, and if it's this book, then it's worse than I thought it was. And, um, I, we shouldn't, it shouldn't get in his hands. And, and if, if Talus is on the line for it, that's his problem. What about Jeannie? Hey, guys, we really shouldn't be talking about this out here. You. Maybe we could go back to the dorms. <laughs> right. Yeah. So that's where you're going? Back to the dorm? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So Vado just awkwardly interrupts the conversation. I think, like, there's, like, people walking by, but, like, you know, like, I think we're talking quietly, but still, Vado mm -hmm. is like, we it's should Renee not be pretty animated. I'm it's sure a, that someone looks. Yeah. There's, like, a couple of people yeah. go by being like, wow, hear an argument on the street. Well, I think it's also the equivalent of us standing in the middle of the walkway, so people are, like, walking Forced around to us. walk around us. Yeah, yeah and Fado is very aware of that and doesn't want to be that person in this nice little shopping area. <laughs> um, and so I think, um, I like to imagine there's, like, a, a five times sped up montage of us just walking back to, uh, to the, the school uh, because we have to walk the long way. Uh -huh. And we go back to, I'm assuming we're going back to Renee and Fado's room. Yeah, uh, okay, so, so yeah. we go back to our yeah. dorm room. Mm -hmm. And we close the door. Fado mm -hmm. closes the door. You totally left it unlocked when you left, right? <laughs> no. Did we bring our, our keys to get in? <laughs> do we, I always do we want to call the, the RA? I think she's asking... <laughs> I think she's asking if we definitely left it unlocked because it's unlocked now. It definitely is locked now. Oh. Oh no. Where's Conrad? <laughs> Conrad has a we job. Work. <laughs> wait, Conrad, wait, wait. Sorry. Conrad has a job. Wait, 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 wait. Mm -hmm. The Above door is unlocked. Table. So we, so we had it, it normally locks behind us, but it's unlocked when we get there. Yeah, or you have like a key that you know you unlock, you lock yeah. it when you leave. 
uh, and you you know you do the thing and you put the key in and you turn it the way that you know you would normally turn it to unlock it but you're like wait no and then you're like oh wait the door is unlocked yikes okay so then Faro, i think who was the one to do that kind of turns around to face the group and says someone's been here Shall we go back to the middle of the street no. then? Because oh. that seems safer than this oh. room that someone broke into. Oh, hold on. There's, are they, they're not still here, are they? I don't know. Listen at the door. Uh, Renee is going to shove the box at, at uh, Caster. Hey. Mm -hmm. Hello. I'm the strong one here. And I think without saying anything is going to... Um, uh, lean against the door and begin to kind of mutter to himself and again you see that like ball of shadow begin to accumulate and um, he is going to breathe out and shadow just disappears under the door and he is going to try and kind of extend his awareness into the next room using magic to feel through the mm -hmm. shadows to see if someone is actually in their dorm room I believe that sounds like a brain swirl yeah. Uh, and with <laughs> your magic. Yeah. Let's go, let's go. Okay, guys. So uh, here's the thing. Uh huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> Is everyone just rolling bad tonight? I rolled another Uno. Oh, no. I'm so sorry. I rubbed off on you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so... This was terrible. What'd you roll in your magic die? Oh, right. Yes. Thank, Thank you. <laughs> you can still salvage this. This is not a hard spell. The so ones yeah. also explode, right? <laughs> yeah, ones explode, right? Okay, That's so it. you rolled. One... Hey, hey, Aubrey, wouldn't you know it? Mm -hmm. uh, I rolled snake eyes on a d20 and a d4. Mm -hmm. No! <laughs> mm -hmm. That's definitely real bad <gasps> really Boy. bad can i can i do anything to help <laughs> so can i do like anything four. to help in this situation that's like four, four ones in a row cuz it's like the like only rolls. rolls we've made all we are one for one Cursed. for one for one mm -hmm. yeah we're going to die one for all. the money yeah. one <laughs> for the show yeah. one <laughs> I believe when you roll ones on both, it is literally, there's nothing you can do to save no. it. Um, and I will let you narrate, how does this spell go bad? Um, I think as he's beginning to twist the shadow in front of him, uh, Fado has probably seen him cast this once or twice. He's a, he's a paranoid small man. Um, <laughs> and as the shadow begins to roil, traditionally he would just breathe it out and it would obey him and it would travel under the door and kind of feel through all of the shadow in the room. But this time it begins to turn and turn and turn and a crack of red light dips through it like a bolt of lightning and then another one and another one and what should be all shadow begins to erupt in this frustration and rage that is embodied as almost like static but instead of being purple and blue it's red and it glows in his ice blue eyes and when he breathes it out it just shatters into sparks and they're not quiet yeah no there is that sort of that feeling that kind of like small wave of energy that you all feel the wave of angry energy uh and I, I think there's probably a bit of a crashing sound from the inside of your apartment. Ah! As as maybe the maybe you knocked something over with your magic. Yeah. And I imagine that the sparks actually do travel where the smoke where the like smoky shadow was supposed to go a little bit too. So there's definitely like firecracker sound inside the room as well. Yeah. <laughs> probably some scorch marks on that carpet now. Yep. Okay, yep. flashbang, let's go in. Uh, <laughs> it's going to uh, open the door. I'm opening and the door. <laughs> as it's released, I think that he's frozen in place for a second. Mm -hmm. And I think if I can add on to this. Yeah. Uh, to, to twist the knife a little bit more for you, Renee. Yes, do it, do when it, you do it. Do, when you do this, I think you notice some of this magic gets absorbed into my body. 
and um there is like a weird i don't think i notice it but as some of this because i was standing right there because you were standing right next to me um i think like my hair you know when you your hair gets staticky i think about those curls kind of like stand up and stand out a little bit more and um you because you're standing right next to me i think some of my freckles like blink out Ooh. um and but i don't seem to notice and, and i think you're the only one who would notice that um and faro has not noticed because i'm 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 rushing in i'm rushing in i'm <laughs> Flashbang. Let's go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and as, as you rush in, you're now suddenly very unsure if the place was tossed or just everything kind of got blown around with that spell. <laughs> there are papers everywhere. There's a chair that's been knocked over, but you're unsure yet again. Did somebody actually toss the place or did they just come in and leave? You're relatively sure that there's nobody in there. That's That's a good thing. Is my door closed or open? Uh, I'll ask, how did you leave it? I would have left my door closed. Closed? Uh, it is closed for the time being. What is that supposed to mean? <laughs> what does that mean? Yeah, I don't like that, actually. Fear! <laughs> Can you say that again a better way, Aubrey? <laughs> it is closed for now. Oh! No! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I hate that. Wow. Mm. Um, That's awful. Oh, man. You guys hear behind um, you as you rush in, just a little bit of yelling in the hallway. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, if, if Renee's still frozen, I will follow Fado. With my yeah, box. <laughs> very quickly checking my notes. Um, because... Uh, actually, lovely GM, I'm going to message you. <laughs> okay. Oh, more fear. <laughs> this is Excellent. not at all terrifying. I love I love death and dying. It's fine. Um, after the yelling is muttering, for those of you who can hear in the hallway. Okay, 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 okay. Two things. Both are fine. I was worried that I had left the book in here, but I had it with me, so that's yeah. okay. And also my cat, who had returned to the room, is okay. <laughs> yeah, that's all that matters. Spooked, Spooked hiding I, know, I was like, is Goose bed. okay? <laughs> Goose is fine. Goose is hiding underneath the bed. And I think the same thing is, you know, uh, you, um, your, your, your father, your cat, uh, Renee, you're familiar, is fine as well. He is also just sort of like out of sight and will, as you come back in, sort of reemerge. Once, once Renee comes back to his senses, he will, he will worry about Conrad. Mm. <laughs> Um, okay. I'm gonna, if Renee hasn't entered the room yet, Fado's pulling, grabbing your wrist, yanking you in, closing the door, assuming the other two have come in as well. Yes. <laughs> Close the door in Tom's face now. Uh, <laughs> make sure everyone's in, pulls Renee in, closes the door, and then turns around to face everyone and says, Yeah, not good. Is it's there? Very- Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, you, you you talk. Oh, I was just going to ask, is there a sort of, like, detect, like, listening spells type thing we could do? Yeah, I was going to, I was actually going to do, like, a like a silencing spell to make sure what we say doesn't get out of this yeah. room. Yeah, no. Roll I, I... better than we have been. <laughs> Why don't we'll you see. get a one again? I, I... Shh, shh, shh. Don't speak that into existence. Hush! <laughs> Can I? What am I, what am I rolling? Um, yeah, that is. We'll, we'll also go with a brains roll for that. Okay, okay. My brains isn't bad. Um, before anything gets like anything else gets cast or anything, uh, Renee does whistle for Conrad, and there's like a little door that's actually like a swinging door mm. cut into the bottom of his door, specifically Conrad size. So this little stone mm. just comes like running out. Uh, <laughs> Ed comes over to Renee and just climbs up his leg. This is normal and fine. Math. Oh no, I got a, I got a ten. Okay. No, no, I was doing math. 
That's why. That's why I can't count these. Okay. Okay. I thought you rolled another one. No, no, I, I rolled pretty good. I, I rolled pretty good. Mm-hmm. So yeah, a ten. I, I'd say yeah, you can you could do something that's like as long as you're in this room, you're pretty sure no one can hear you. Oh yeah, um, this room specifically, and that was the, the only one that I was thinking about. So mm-hmm. Caster will kind of just wave his fingers, and um, it kind of like sparks, not sparks, but like sparkles, I guess. Not. Not like yeah, the sparks that you just did. There's a difference between yeah. sparks and sparkles. Sparkles. It's more like it's more like light glints off of his rings, and then it seems to like pinpoint little parts of the corners of the room, and then suddenly it's just a little bit muted. Okay, we can talk now. I think. Yeah, I think that just because Tom is kind of curious about what was up with whoever it is that broke in. Mm -hmm. Uh, They're still going to cast the sort of, like, detect, detection Mm -hmm. spell. And I got an 11. I don't know. 11? Um, Yeah, it's a, um, uh, are you just, like, looking for evidence for sure that somebody has been in, or? Uh, More just, like, did they leave anything behind to listen or watch? So even if we're silenced, Mm -hmm. I'd still like to know if the room has been bugged. You're relatively sure that the room hasn't been bugged. Um you don't think they left anything behind like that. Ominous wording? Okay. (laughs) They probably wanted the book, yeah? How do they know you have it? Well, we we were the ones in the library Mm -hmm. that night who found all of the blood. Um... And only a if, handful of people knows that. The headmaster. Tom hasn't told us about the headmaster thing, so I don't think Faro mm. can say that, but mm. uh Faro is going to um sort of as as he's talking, is walking towards um walking back into his room. Because I think the first thing he did when he ran in was check his room. Um is going to uh get on get on like the rug and look under his bed and pull a frightened goose out from under the bed and picks up this uh long hair and white cat um in their arms and just starts like comforting him Mm -hmm. and i have a question for you aubrey how do familiars work in this game are you able like are you able to like commune with them can you talk to them um because i know that like they can understand you to a point um yeah i'd say you could like you could commune you could talk okay May, can i do that <laughs> yeah like what what would you what would you like to know what would you like to ask your familiar um okay so i think what this looks like um Vado comes out holding my very large chunky boy goose um yeah like that but white oh. colored <laughs> um I'm holding my my big cat and I go to sit on the couch. Probably I I like am holding him with one arm, shoving a bunch of papers and stuff that had, had been spilled onto the couch um over with an arm so I can sit down um and not sit on any of Renee's notes that have been spewed everywhere. Um and I think Faro literally <laughs> I want this to sound cool. Mm-hmm. However, it's probably just what it sounds like is Faro meowing. <laughs> like I want it to sound like a cool magic spell mm-hmm. kind of no, but I think I think Faro just starts meowing. <laughs> I mean, it's fine. We we see we we talk to our familiars too. I'm sure yeah. it's about the same way. Yeah, so Faro is just I sitting on fox, the couch, so positioning positioning goose on their lap mm. and just starts going meow, 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 meow. he's got an accent <laughs> Jazz, it's your turn what does the fox say <laughs> thank you thank you so much <laughs> oh, 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 I'm so sorry, Aubrey. I had to. So I will ask. I will ask. 
Faro, what are you trying yeah? to ask this cat? Like, yes, you've given me the cat oh, version. What do you translate what it do you, English for the rest of us? What do you mean cat. you didn't understand uh, I'm my, asking my for our audience. meowing? Yeah, our audience can't speak cat. Our audience can't speak cat. Oh, okay, I, of okay. course, can. but, but you understood. But you, oh, yes. but you got me. Uh-huh. You got me, right? Uh-huh. You got me. Okay, okay. For our audience who does not speak cat, let me. <laughs> I'm calm, I'm calm, Let I'm me calm. tell you, translation. So, <laughs> can't believe I just meowed in a game. Okay. <clears throat> I can. Yeah. Okay. So true. Anyway, uh, Fado is asking Goose essentially, like, first of all, saying like, "Oh, that was just Renee making that loud noise. You're okay. Don't worry." Um, I think Fado. Faro does say R- Renee would never hurt you. You don't have to worry about anything. And then says, I noticed that our door was unlocked. Um, did anyone come in? I think is the first question that Faro is asking. Yeah, so you, you get sort of like the little muse for an answer to that. You just... Are you not going to meow? Because I meowed. I'll meow. Just meow, 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 meow. <laughs> I can to the bit, audience. Yeah, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> uh, and yes, you you get the the uh you uh there is one person who came in. They had some sort of spell that was obscuring their face, so Goose doesn't know who they were. Uh, mm-hmm. They came in and they went through your room looking for the book. Cool. Uh, Okay. Faro is now asking, um, do you recognize what they smelled like? You get a no. Uh... Faro pauses and thinks about something else. And I think Faro literally looks up to the group and says, So I'm asking my cat what happened. A, a, um, he says a person did come into our room and went in my room specifically to look for the book, which they weren't able to find since... And Faro pats uh, his bag since I have it. Um person had a spell obscuring their face so goose did not recognize them and also the smell was not recognizable either what else should i ask my cat uh before renee even responds like you say you say all the details of that and renee just storms off to his room and pushes open the door and looks in is any of the organized chaos disturbed you're pretty sure it has not been disturbed. So whoever came cool. in knew which room was Fado's. Yeah. Oh, I don't right. like that. Uh-uh. Uh, I hate that, actually. I hate um, that. Um, sp- sp- really quickly, did you say all of that in your room, Fado? Did you come out to the no, living no, room? No, I, I came back. I came okay, back. Okay, okay. No, 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 okay. no because I, I'm <laughs> sitting on the couch with gotcha. the cat on my lap. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just, I, I glitched and forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so what, 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 anything else I should ask my cat? Um, I mean, it seems pretty straightforward. They were looking for the book. Cat didn't recognize them. Obviously, if they didn't recognize, if your cat didn't recognize their smell, then probably isn't someone who has been in this room before. Good work, Goose. Uh, and I think Faro kind of like looks to the left and to the right and locates like a small container of like treats and like pushes it towards him with his foot and reaches down, opens the container and will give uh, Goose a treat. <laughs> That's a great way to settle down a cat that's nervous. Here, have some food. Yeah. Absolutely. Also works yeah, on yeah, yeah. Exactly. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, I'm nervous. Give this... me some food. I'm better. 
during this also like Renee has very quietly in just like normal words told Conrad that uh that he's done a good job uh <laughs> but just like turns to the stove and addresses him like he's just another person just like you you've done a very good job here yes you can take the rest of the night off <laughs> meanwhile in the background <laughs> <"Meow>, <laughs> meow, yeah <laughs> Asher's looking between the two of them like, what are you doing? <laughs> Renee distinctly only talks to familiars like they are uh, like human beings and like Conrad fully has a job and is in, in his employ. So so Conrad's your butler. That's what Basically. it sounds like. Yes. Yes, actually. <laughs> I take the rest of the night off. You've had Conrad it. is the one that cleans the desk so that I can work on it. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Boy, no one ever sees Conrad. Conrad has a job. It's so what kind of animal is Conrad again? Is so he's messy. a stoat. Right now he's white. <laughs> the white stoat. I want to What's see his stoat little again? Head. It's like stoat a is like a weasel. ferret type creature. Yeah, yeah. it's a weasel. I... Right, right, They're right, very right, cute. Right. <laughs> they have good they little faces. Cute. Also, uh, to to patch up a little continuity error, or not a continuity error, a little plot hole. There is a cat door on in our door, our like first door. There is a cat door. That is how Goose got in and out of the room without me. Also, how they unlocked the door. <laughs> well, it's All the right, cat then. door. You can't. I mean, unless they. I guess with magic you could shrink yourself. Maybe it's a cat door that's been magicked to only allow. <laughs> yeah, I don't even think it allows Conrad out. Yeah. I don't know. Or Conrad. Hand waves. Well, magic. Conrad, magic. Conrad has a job. There's food and water and a bed. It's fine. Um, yeah. Um, then Renee, like, just starts to pick up, like, random things that are tossed on the floor. Um, and, like, picks up a pillow and very angrily, like, straightens it out and dusts it off and then puts it onto the one of the chairs. Your well, notes then. about... Sorry. Oh, go ahead. Your notes about what happened to me must be strewn around then, huh? They are oh. mostly in his room, but there are oh, in some out okay. in the... There are a few out in the, like, main room because it's been so frantic lately. Yeah. So there's a decent chance that you guys are able to to scope some, some stuff because it's all just strewn around. Yep. Handing He's... you knives. You're welcome. Yep. <laughs> and Renee is, like, picking all of them up by like the armful and you see that like even though he's been given the night off conrad is also picking them up and starting to like carry them over to renee's room and they don't fit through the door (laughs) goose um has left my lap and is curled up on the couch next to me doing absolutely nothing to help (laughs) goose is probably laying on top of some papers there are no papers under me Yep. Yeah, oh, don't worry I'm about white. It. The paper is white. Don't worry I'm white. about it. The paper is white. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and Renee like angrily starts to straighten up. Go ahead. I was I was just gonna say, do you need any help with that? Nope. I um, stoop to start helping pick up. I think Tom looks between the living room and Renee's room and sees the state of uh, organized chaos in Renee's room and says. Oh, so they looked in your room too, then. (laughs) Um, no, no. Um, I've been just very busy, and this, as far as I can tell, they did not enter my room. Um, thank you, Tom. Yeah, Tom, um, Renee, uh, his room looks messy, but it's, uh, Renee actually knows where everything is inside there. Thank uh, you, Faro. You're welcome. <clears throat> Would so anyone like anything to drink? W- uh, I'll have water if you have any, but that seems worse, right? That they only checked one room? That does seem worse. I was but- there, so if it's about the library, then that doesn't add up. It is about Faro in particular. Tell us as your mentor. They probably figured if he was going to hide the book anywhere, it would be with you. Well, I, given 
I think like from from the little like kitchenette in our dorm, I thought I was getting water and uh, says, given that uh, my proximity to Professor Tallis, I think it would make sense for them to check my room. Aubrey. Yes. Is there any indication of how long ago this happened? Quite possibly. Give me... I have asked Goose that. I was about to say something to ask the cat, maybe. Um, yeah, I, you I don't trust gotten... cats being able to tell time. Yeah, they, uh, they, they don't have like in the middle different. of my third cat built nap different. of the day, so it would have been about two feet. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, you... There's something specific. Give me a... Give me a brains roll real quick. It's not going to be a very high DC. Uh, I'm going to roll better than a one, hopefully. Yeah. You just jinxed it. You jinxed Why it. would you say that? I didn't jinx I'm... it. That's an 18. Yeah. See, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. You have to roll a one in order to pass the curse on, right? Because both yes. of you rolled ones, and now you're rolling fine. So Tom and I both haven't rolled yet. Mm. We might roll mm. ones, but then it'll get better. Hopefully. Yeah, you you do that, and you're wondering this uh, as you move over to the coffee table and pull up some papers. And as you do, you can feel it underneath the papers. Something on the coffee table is warm. This just as, happened. As As you do this, you pull the papers away and burned into the coffee table is a circle. How big? Like, yay big. Okay, okay. It's a circle, but you know what that means. Oh. What is unbroken but a circle? Yeah, yeah. That doesn't um, well. What does that mean? Uh, he he looks at it and his hands go from like frantically searching and kind of light to his whole body tenses and he grabs the table and he was about to be like, oh, someone marked my table. And instead of saying something, he fully flips the table. <laughs> no. What, <laughs> what, what, what happened? You're right. Kessler will write the table. <laughs> that is mahogany. <laughs> that is mahogany! <laughs> Basically. <laughs> the people that Arcos works with. The people that my parents work with. Have any of you heard of the Unbroken? Have I heard Have of we? the Unbroken? <laughs> Have I heard of the Unbroken? <laughs> Give me anybody who wants to do. It's Time gonna to do roll. Some, yeah, Let's do a brains roll. Uh, okay. I got a big fat five. <laughs> Same. Which dice? Yes. Okay, I'll take this one. Oh, get that one. Is that, get that one? one? Is it your one? Did you get it? Everybody gets <laughs> one. <laughs> we did it, gang. We did it. Oh, we heckin' God. did it. <laughs> this is iconic. <laughs> we need to change the title of this session to The Only One. <laughs> and it's just about Tom. Tom is the only one. <laughs> Congratulations, you've won. <laughs> Wow. It was a fucking one. <laughs> oh, God. On a D20. Uh, that was my two. Both, that was my yep. two, dude. Yep. We did so good. It hurt so bad. <laughs> Why? <laughs> okay. Well, there's my one. 
So I haven't heard of this despite being Renee's best friend. <laughs> Renee does not talk about it, so that's mm -hmm. actually okay. that makes sense actually. Okay. Uh and so Caster and Tom, you both got five? Yep. <laughs> you are aware that the Unbroken is a group? You're unsure of <laughs> what they do. You know you've heard it and you've seen the symbol before. Uh <laughs> but you're like, I don't know, they they do things, I guess. They're a group in the same way that the Red Sox are a baseball team. Exactly. <laughs> because we established last session that baseball exists in this world. <laughs> That's right. Oh, no. We did. Um, this is what you get when and, I'm the note taker. <laughs> Renee is like seething at anything to do with this at this point. And actually, I think more of that residual like red electric energy just begins to like spool in behind his eyes and you can kind of see it beginning to glow a little bit behind his almost translucent white skin uh, okay breathe perhaps and tell us what's going on I'm guessing that's not good does Faro know how to calm Renee down Probably. Kiss him. Um, Don't do that. How? I think that like a shoulder Faro, rub? Or what? Yeah, what are you thinking? Um, I think Faro knows that if he can catch Renee's eyes and kind of co regulate with just like a deep breath, mm -hmm. um, it will probably go very, very far. Are you standing or sitting right now? Uh, I'm hunched over the flipped, flipped over table. coffee table that's been... Oh, unfit. I righted it. Yep. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, can I, can I um, guide you onto the couch mm -hmm. very gently? And um, I kind of, like, push my body, like, wedge it in between you and the table. Um, and I think it kind of... The coffee table just kind of scoots along the rug as I sit um, basically at your feet and... I will reach, uh, well, kneel, but like not ha where, where you like sit on your feet, like standing up kneeling. Yeah. Um, and I, oh, this is so gay. I'm going to reach for your chin and tilt your chin up so that you look at me. And I'm just going to say, Renee, breathe. <sighs> And Renee just stays still for a moment. Closes you don't his have eyes. To, you don't have to talk about it. But just calm down a little bit. You're, um, sparking again. Sorry. I do have to talk about it. Okay. And I'm going to, um, stand up and sit on the coffee table like over the mark so you don't have to look at it but I'm going to sit on it so I'm facing you <laughs> and I'm just and I'm just going to say uh whenever you're ready Tom has disappeared where yep. <laughs> pausing <was> like... <laughs> for Tom Oh ah. so there yeah okay. cool uh Renee takes another kind of slow breath Sparking subsides. <sighs> the polite upper echelon, the benefactors and founders of this city. Among them is a group called the Unbroken. They operate in what seems like a um, quiet and omnipresent but quiet uh, manner where they prefer to be unknown prefer to just be seen as a magnanimous entity they go to parties, they go to people's houses, they sit and have polite tea in people's parlors while the world is still in shadow One of those is the home that I grew up in. Akos is a leader of 
those people. And until fairly recently, I just thought it was a powerful group that I did not trust. But the longer I've been away from my father's, the more I have seen that where power amasses, you can find traces of the unbroken. Pieces here and there. And I trust it less and less, and now I know that they are trying to pull on all of those woven threads that go deep inside of this city, inside of this bastion of light. To what end, I don't know, and I don't like it. Why let us know that they were here? Who did it, specifically? Why would they tell us this warning? a warning um maybe I'm missing something who's Akos um the um the person who came and visited Talus oh right that, and I think, there. like, you can see the wheels in Fado's head turning, and Fado just says, that must be, so if, if the intruder was Arcos, that would explain why he knew about me, because he came to visit Talus. The thing about Arcos is we cannot, we, we are fairly gifted among us. Uh, Tom, you, you seem to be able to hear through walls. I don't quite know how you do it. And, and Casta, you, you've, despite today's slip-up, you seem to know everyone and be able to charm everyone. Um, is that an asset? Yes. Yes, of course it is. Continue. And Faro, you know, I, I couldn't do anything without you, but... Uh, this is well outside of our ability. Did I not say that? Because what I said that, like immediately. Hmm? <sighs> Nothing. He said it immediately, and so we went to the teachers, and that really seems to have been sort of what got us into this mess. I don't think we should be throwing blame around. I don't know if this would have gone any better with any other plan. Okay, well, what do we do? You have the book. They want the book pretty badly. Seems as though this Akos is threatening Professor Talos. And I still don't know how Junie fits into all of this. Is she a hostage? Is she dead? My gut is telling me that Juni just happened to stumble upon this and was trying to investigate herself and got caught. At least that's what is the most likely answer, given that the alternative is much more sinister. If she was perhaps working on it with Talus. Seems uncharacteristic of her definitely this moment think if in the middle of this conversation there's a soft knock at your door and i think flinches i (laughs) think that is where we will take our break (laughs) Uh, we'll be back in about 10 minutes uh uh, everybody get up, stretch your legs, use the bathroom, get something to eat, get something to drink, take your meds, all that fun stuff. We'll be back in about 10 minutes to finish up episode three. Go co-regulate with your best friend. Yeah. yeah. Hydrate or die straight and go talk to your cats. Mew, 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 mew. <laughs>
Hello, and welcome back from break. Welcome back to the second half of the third episode of Mysteries of Ravenswood. Uh, as we left things off, there was a knock at the door. Fear. Yeah, Renee also jumps. Caster goes to call who is it before remembering that literally nobody can hear outside of this room, so... <laughs> I do we have a peephole? Is this the era of peepholes? Yeah, it's, it's a cat door. <laughs> I'm not one, opening the cat door to peer. <laughs> one, two, two of the cat door. Two, yeah, I'd say that there's a peephole. You know, just, okay. just like a little little thing you could just sort of look out and see who's there. I would like to look in the peephole to see who is outside our room. Uh, you see another student. Um, she has she's a sort of this elven girl. Uh, she has very expertly pressed clothes and uh she has this long wavy uh sort of auburn hair and she kind of looks a little bored 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 yes she's okay kinda, like doing this thing where she's like she's knocked and then she's like <laughs> is this our oh, ra <laughs> no, but you know who this is. Her name is uh, Victoria Verta. Uh, She's like Victoria. Uh, so and uh, she is she's in your class. Um, it's interesting because she is a she's a twin brother named Nikolai, uh, and they're usually where you find one, you find the other. Nikolai is nowhere to be seen. Mm, interesting. Um. Faro is gonna just gesture for the rest of you to just like get get out of the line of sight when I open the door. Renee does. I think that this is a thing that they've done before. Yeah, because Renee does not like talking to people. That, like every time someone knocks on our door, mm -hmm. Renee disappears into his room and Faro answers the door. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> so uh Faro gestures to the other two, because I think Renee's already moved. Gestures to the other two to move. Um, and I will open the door just to crack and just say, uh, good evening, Victoria. Uh, how can I, how, how can I help you? Oh, yeah, Faro. Um, yeah, so, like, I've been totally told to bring a message to you. Uh-huh. Um, Faro does yawn, mm -hmm. just slightly. Yeah. Uh, Excuse me. It's, like, from, from the headmaster. Uh, he asks that you and anybody else who was in the library yesterday come to his office as soon as you can. He needs to talk to you about something. Like tonight? I was about to go to bed. It's, it's the afternoon. A nap. Well, I just had to deliver the message. Please don't make him... I don't want to deal with him again. Just go okay. whenever you get a chance today. I appreciate it. Thanks, uh, Victoria. You're welcome. And um, yeah, she was just, she's not even gonna like wait to say goodbye. She's already moving away. Yeah, and I kind of like watch her go and then just close the door, turn back to the rest of y'all and say, well, I guess no afternoon nap for me. Shame I could use one. Hmm. This seems ill-advised. <sighs> You're not yeah. actually planning to go, are you? Of course. I, I, I think it looks more suspicious if we don't go, honestly. Yes. Because right now, our story is just that we were in the library, we saw a bunch of blood, we called for help. That's all that happened. Right? Oh, did you hear you can't. did you, you hear anything else, Tom? I mean I look at Tom. <laughs> Cause I know. I, I I heard him talking um yesterday with the Captain Gore, um, the head of the Holy Order, the Holy Blood. Mm. They were asking, they were talking about the book. Well, in what way? Yeah, what? Well, I need a little bit more context, please. Um, 
headmaster, I told you, he he was asking, he told the headmaster to lay low, I think, and that, oh, that the book was supposed to be sealed away, and like, how did Talos lose it? Hmm. Hmm. These could be disconnected incidents. Seems like a very important book to keep tabs on, so... Perhaps Talus stole it from one and is meant to give it to the other. Yeah, perhaps if Ekos somehow maybe promised Talus something big, that would get Talus to steal the book. Or steal his own work back, because Talus did tell me that he had put the book away. Which, I wasn't sure if that was a lie or not. He seemed a bit fidgety about that, so I assumed that it was at least a half-truth. But... Yeah... I don't... I don't... I don't like this. It's not... Not an ideal situation. I think we should go. Also, yeah. I think we should Quickly. go, but... Should we make a contingency plan in case, you know... Yes. Something goes sideways. I'm pretty do quick on my broom. Could fly do away. I, do I, do. <laughs> I think I think you, you see Vado laugh for the first time in a while. Like, like genuinely laugh. Um, and Vado just says, <laughs> yeah, we walk in there and Headmaster's like, hey, have you seen this book? And... <laughs> <laughs> Great plan. Great, great plan. Um, well, it might be good to not have the book on us at the time. Go. Yeah, I was going to say, do I leave it here? But the room's been tossed. You don't reckon they'd come back, do you? <sighs> what we give it to my familiar? She's quick. And... Uh, I do have a lockbox in my room. I could put it in the lockbox. What if, like... Tom, you seem reluctant to go? Are you going? Well, you have to. They they want all four of us. Yeah, but Victoria only delivered the message to you. Yeah. Yes. They have no reason to know. So if Castro Tom, you choose not to go, you can hold the book. Yeah, do you mind if I just stay here? I'm a little hesitant to be to be walking around with it. You'd be okay. We could also put it in the lockbox and you could just stay in the living room. Yes. That's smart. And that if anybody, if anyone walks in, then your excuse is that we are working on a group project together and uh, Faro and Renee are sleeping. You're catching yeah. me up from necromancy class. Yeah. Good plan. Oh, that's right. Vampires, you missed it. Did I? Yeah. And Fado was just looking at you. <laughs> There's a little light bulb that goes off over Caster's head as he connects the dots. <laughs> Caster doesn't get it. Gets it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'll stay here with the book and Caster, you still want to go? I mean, they haven't found you either. We think. Sort of noticeable. But, um, yeah, actually, if you don't mind, I, I'd rather we didn't split up so totally. So, do you want to stay here with Tom? You're right with that. I'm asking Tom, but it's a general question. I mean, it's your choice. You were... I don't want you to get in trouble with the headmaster either. You were the most wanting to go. <sighs> yes, well... If you don't believe that the stuff is completely trustworthy, then I'm more inclined to listen to you, to be honest. I can just play dumb. I, am we, I mean, we also could just say that today's the day we don't have classes with you, which, which is true. We don't have classes with you today. 
besides the one we already had and after class we went Just shopping anyway. and then we mm -hmm. all split off and didn't see you so couldn't exactly. find you and we wanted to come right away because we just got the message so we're gonna come right away we sent you a letter and you know you'll show up if you show up right yep exactly so you know anyway as i said i can play dumb with the best of them so if they do ask me questions later then we'll fix that is going to walk into her room and pull out this uh lockbox which i imagine is enchanted um, and I'm going to use my magic wand to open my lockbox. Um, do I have to roll or am I, am I safe to open it? <laughs> yeah, I'd say you're safe to open it. It's okay, yours. Cool. So I open it, um, and I think there's like an over-the-shoulder shot of the contents of this box. Um, and you see family photos. Um, of Fado's family. Uh, Fado comes from a very big family. Um, so there's like, I don't know. It, it's, it's kind of the vibes of like having more than 10 siblings kind of vibes. Um, and in the box is a random assortment of items. And I think for our audience, um, all of Fado's family members have given him something. To remind him of them as he goes away to school um he is the first person to leave his family's like small town to go to this big city and go to school um because Faro is the first person in their family who is magically adept um and yeah so the box is just full of random trinkets and mementos nothing that looks super pricey or expensive um it's all sentimental value and um faro kind of moves some of the stuff over and kind of like stacks it all very very neatly um into like one half of the box and then reaches into his bag pulls the book out um kind of like flips through it just like almost out of habit like runs of just flipping through the pages super quickly and nestles the book into the box um and takes one last look at it and then hesitates for a moment and then like moves some of the trinkets back over it to like just cover it mm -hmm. um and then replaces the family picture um which had been taken out and just replaces the family photo on top um looks at it one last time closes it locks it with magic again and uh like literally i think that just like kicks it not not like hard but like kicks it back under their bed where yeah, that box a gentle is gentle kick with your foot a so gentle kick push yeah, it yeah. To as far underneath your bed as you can yep to where it normally is stored yep and then you just see photo like take a breath and um turns back around and closes their door to their room um while you were out uh-huh um, the moment that Faro goes to stash the book, um, Renee gets up and looks Caster straight in the eyes and has to look up. It is yes. playing. What? You're not dumb. I... Okay, I didn't realize this would bother you so much. You're not. Um... Not exactly you, now am I? Yes, but don't be me. Castor. You you do know that everyone at this school likes you. Well, I certainly hope so. Worked very hard to get there, aren't we? That's a skill. <laughs> it okay. is, it's a skill. Okay, I... D I'm sorry. It's one I never had. I like you, Renee. You like everyone. That is not true. <laughs> it's not true. All right. Victoria? Hmm. She's fine. It's My brother fine. is fine. It's right. But it's, it's just, you're just playing dumb.
I suppose. And that's so probably when Fado comes in. Mm-hmm. Um, and Fado comes back out and just says, put the book in the lockbox, lockbox under the bed, door shut. Good. And, uh, and I think, like, Goose is, like, walking around uh, Fado's ankles and they just, like, pick up the cat, place the cat in front of the door and say, cat, guard. <laughs> cat nods. <laughs> uh, the most amenable cat. <laughs> yeah, Fado leans down and like grabs Goose's little fluffy face and just gives gives him a big smooch on the head. <laughs> in the next room, my face. If I ever did that to her. <laughs> in the next room, Conrad has like taken out a beach chair, sipping a mai tai. <laughs> a beach chair. <laughs> a mai tai. <laughs> Look, Conrad uh, has the night off. Conrad a meow tai. A meow tai. Yeah. Uh, I hate this. <laughs> <laughs> but um, <tss. laughs> well, so um, Faro yeah. and Renee, you are headed up to the headmaster's office. It is at the top of the main tower. You head up all of these stairs. Do you just traverse in silence? No, uh, no, okay. no. I didn't imagine so. No. I think this is the most talkative Fado's been to Renee in a while. Um, and Fado's, and this is the conversation that I think he wanted to have in the bookstore and opted not to. And so Fado is just like, I think it's like awkwardly quiet for a little bit. And then like once we're like walking down the hallway, because uh, again, we're taking the long way. Uh, <laughs> Fado just kind of like looks over at Renee because uh, I think we're just walking like shoulder and shoulder, and Fado just says, "So Caster saw that." You're right. Did... I, I I'm fine. I guess. I guess I I will be fine. Um. I don't know how to feel that someone else knows though. Well, it has to be something that we deal with perhaps after st sticking our noses where they're not meant to be. Yeah, this whole situation is definitely way bigger than I ever thought it might be. Yeah, and um, I... I didn't want any of that to be true. But, oh, what? but my father's. I know. And I think Fado doesn't say anything, but instead is just thinking about like all of the differences between himself and Renee and how. Renee comes from, I believe you said it's a smaller family. And, yeah. And um, very small. <laughs> very small family and kind of, you know, bad, bad parents, but very incredibly wealthy, um, very well integrated into politics and social politics of the city versus Fado's family is huge and very poor and from a smaller small town far away from any city um and just like the differences in our lives and when we were matched together as roommates the beginning of our school year it definitely was very much i think like uh like a uh alpha galinda situation <laughs> like absolutely yes um, yes yes just two very very different people who come from very two two very different backgrounds who I think became very close despite all of our differences. And Faro just says, I know you've talked about your family to me and um, I don't know what else I can say besides I'm sorry that 
it is indeed worse. It's all right. I think once we get down to the bottom of whatever this endless well of intrigue seems to be, perhaps we can find some answers for you in regards to your fathers and also, hopefully, maybe figure out what's wrong with me. Yeah. Right now, though, I'm... Changed or not, um, I don't think I would have said yes if you weren't coming right now. Yes. To what? To any of this. Why? I want to run. I'm not here to be a hero or a, a hunter. I just want to... I j just want to change what's been wrong this whole time. That's it. Mm, I know. I, I, <laughs> believe me, I didn't want any of this either. I just wanted to learn something useful to take back to my town. Well, you have that. Well, I think very softly, Fado just says, I don't know how much of the light I've got anymore. We'll work on it. I know. And I think Fado reaches for you and puts a hand on, like, your arm. And just like squeezes your arm gently. And Fada says, I know. There's got to be an answer somewhere. Has to be. Truthfully, perhaps a small bit of me is hoping that Talus is somehow just caught up in all of this than isn't actually doing anything nefarious. I, I really would think that he might know about what happened to me or that he could help in some way. I just, I can't stop thinking about how this is so unlike him and only someone as powerful as well, the people that you talked about, the, the, the unbroken. People that powerful can move anyone, I suppose. It's all of the political machinations I never quite understood myself. Faro, yeah. it's a choice. It's a choice to deal with them. And I know that you want to believe that Talos is who you thought he was. But... Akos, once they get someone into their fold, it's a choice to stay. I, I just can't believe that he would do that. He, I mean, you know, I'd, I'd come back late, you know, past my very early bedtime out late working with him. We spent so many hours together. He talked a lot about himself. I know him so well, or at least I thought I did. I just... <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't, I don't know it's real anymore. And I just... It... When you say that, Renee stops. And looks you straight in the eyes. Otto. What's real is this. Is us.
I think Fado holds your gaze for a bit, for a moment, for a moment longer than a moment, and then they look away and they say, I know you, you've been there for me since move in day, first year, and I don't know. I've been thinking last night I couldn't sleep, just stayed up thinking about all of the years spent studying under Professor Tellus and my worst fears about if all of it was for naught. I think part of me is desperately hoping that he isn't this I don't know I have a frustrating confession to make even now as I stand here I still love my fathers they were men that raised me well tried to care. It's okay. It's okay to care about him. He can be both. I think we start walking again, but slower. <laughs> and Faro just says, um... He talked to me at length about legacy and what that means. And at the time, you know, he said he related to me a lot in that sense, but I thought, you know, he was more so referring to the fact that I'm the first person in my family to go to school like this. And that what we were learning together and my talent and my aptitude for alchemy was something special, something worth something, something that would change the lives of my family and my town. And now I see, or last night I realized that he is a man obsessed with legacy. And if the Unbroken offered him something good enough, perhaps he'd do anything. That is the scariest thing for me. Only one way to find out. Fuck. I, even though I am definitely shorter than him, I offer Faro my arm like a gentleman. Uh, and I'm going to hold you as we, I think, arrive at the door. Yeah, there's the door in front of you. It has the, it's beautifully carved, has the name plate of Professor Andreas Ravenswood. I take it that you knock. Yeah, After a uh, moment. <laughs> I, I think I think Renee uh Fado knows that Renee likely is not gonna be the one to knock. So um Fado takes a moment to Yes. You <laughs> you knock on the door. Uh yeah, so Fado will knock. Yeah. You watch as a moment or two later it swings open by magic. Uh, and you can kind of see into this large office uh, and you see the professor, the headmaster, standing by his desk. He currently looks to be pouring himself a cup of tea uh, and just goes, come, come, come in. Uh, I was just about to have tea if you would like some. Uh, this is... Make yourselves comfortable. Uh, and as you enter in, you see 
it's sort of it's got two levels sort of this main level and you see stairs going up to probably what is some sort of residence possibly uh and down here you see the desk there are portraits on the walls and there are cases filled with items magical items that over the course of uh his life he has collected you see in one of the cases on this sort of very very nice velvet pillow a crown it is beautiful as it is mostly seems to be made of diamonds on it has diamonds on it but the diamonds are strange because it seems like each diamond and the center of it has a sort of a constantly flowing drop of blood. Hmm. Well, Rene was gonna... gonna sit down, but now he's just staring. Yeah, uh, that's not suspicious at all. What is that? I know, Rene wants it. <laughs> There's a thing in the case. And you know, as if you're staring and he sees, he goes, oh yes, uh, that is something I, a, a, a very prized possession of mine. I, I have found it uh, when we were on an adventure. Uh, I'm not sure completely if it is the actual thing, but I quite possibly believe it is the crown of the Scarlet Queen. Uh, above table. That's the vampire, right, in the city? Uh, no. The Scarlet no, Queen okay. is... She herself is has something that has been turned into legend. Uh, everyone's pretty sure she did exist, but, you know, there's a lot of things and essentially is she was murdered her husband on the wedding night and then ruled uh, the kingdom with an iron fist and the no one could kill her and the only way split her up in a bunch of pieces. Yeah, up a bunch of pieces so good. She is, uh, according to the story, still alive. Delicious. Wait, is this a legend like above table that is like a real legend that people know of? Yeah. Or it's oh. a story that is told. Uh, it happened probably about six hundred years ago, but it's a story that has been told and retold, uh, and everyone is aware of this is this this happened, but everyone's unsure of where the real life thing ends and the myth begins. For some reason, it's the first time I'm hearing of this. So wait, the only way to kill her is to cut her up into a bunch of pieces, or no? She she couldn't die, so they cut her up into a bunch of pieces. Supposedly, oh. she's still alive, God. despite being divided up in a bunch of pieces. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. The um, I have so many questions. Uh, right, this is not what we're here. No, no, headmaster. No, yes, mm -hmm. Um. That is just remarkable. You wanted to see us. Yes, yes, I did. I wanted to talk to all of you. I hope Victoria will find your other two friends. Um, I just, I wanted to make sure that you were all alright after yesterday. You, it's not something that I wish that students would ever come across. I always strive to make the school incredibly safe so that nothing like this ever happens. And I want to let both of you know that we are investigating this. And we will figure out who did this. How um, sus is this? This yeah, seems how, sus. How sus is this? Inside check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, while Renee was looking mm -hmm. at this uh, spook spooky crown, mm -hmm. uh, Faro also wants to just generally look at all of these items. I want to see if there's anything missing or anything that's standing out specifically. Um, There are a few spots where it looks like things were and not. Maybe they've been moved. Maybe they've been donated. Mm -hmm. um, nothing seems to be suspiciously missing. You do notice that there are places where things probably were at one point. Maybe they were donated. Uh, maybe they were given away. Uh but nothing mm -hmm. seems suspicious. But both of you give me brains checks for uh, insight check. All right, I'm, I'm going to not use... roll that one that gave me the... I know, I'm going to use before. my other dice that didn't roll a one. <laughs> That's probably a good idea. That's a 12. <laughs> I rolled two ones and 11. Uh... <laughs> okay. 
Oh, um, <gasps> and I, I, I do get a bonus to bring. Oh, I get a bonus to brain's magic. Never mind. So, yeah. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. So an eleven. Oh, you're both relatively sure it's he's you know, he's being above board in the way that he's also fishing for information. <laughs> yeah, okay. that feels right. So uh, like every conversation I've ever had with my parents. Got it. Yeah, he's just yeah, like, literally. Yes, I absolutely <laughs> want to know that you're all right. But please tell me everything that you saw yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's very much just like, if you could tell us anything about what you saw that we might have overlooked, uh, it would be a great help. You were there uh, first. You, you got a good look at everything before we arrived. I mean, I was mostly just shocked at all of the blood that was there. It was quite a lot of blood. Um... I don't know. I, I I I was pretty frazzled that night, uh, but we found Junie's bag. Uh, there was just her normal stuff inside it. Um, it had been shoved under the table, almost as if whoever did that wanted to hide it. Although I'm not sure if the amount of blood that was present would have hidden what was there, but. I didn't really notice anything else, again, because of all the blood. And uh, Fado looks to Renee. <laughs> uh, Renee is looking at Fado um, and has a extremely, like, dire contemplative look on his face. Uh, Fado's brow furrows ever so slightly, as if to be like, what are you what what like what are you thinking like whatever you're thinking don't do anything drastic <laughs> um in all of my light snooping around about the unbroken do i think that ravenswood is attached to them it's hard to tell the yeah. unbroken have their their claws in everywhere not exactly a spy. I've just kind of noticed. Yeah. All right. Then uh, Renee kind of grinds his fairly sharp teeth. Mm -hmm. The only thing that seemed out of sorts was, um, well, I, uh, I thought that Juniper was working on something and her work seems to be missing. He, he sort of looks at both of you and is like, I personally have never instructed Miss Novak in any classes, so I'm unsure of what she might have been working on. She came looking for me, and um, she said that she had a project that she was working on. It was um, after Professor Tallis's class. Um, seemed urgent. That was the last time I saw her before she went missing. Yes, yeah, she also talked to me that day. Well, we are we are unsure of Miss Novak's current whereabouts, so she is not on campus. I can only hope that she is all right, and we will. Don't don't you have some kind of like location magic? I I, I don't. My specialty was alchemy, um, but couldn't you find her with magic? Yes, that is a possibility, but it is also incredibly invasive to someone's privacy. But she's missing. Yes, and we have people on it. People are looking into things and I didn't want to pry into her privacy if this was all unrelated and that she had just decided to skip school for the day. I feel the thing like is, the amount of blood that we saw might negate that. Also, because what she was working on seemed to be quite dire. She doesn't normally need help. She's one of the best students at your school. She came looking for me for help. She was working on something important and it was missing. So whatever was missing is the important thing. Well, we will go over the library again and see if there was anything that we were missing. 
if there's anything that either of you can tell us that will help us figure out what this is. May I speak freely? Yes, anything that you tell me will not leave this room. Uh, I think, Renee, you watch Faro like steal himself um because i think like throughout his time at school Faro hasn't necessarily been like a goody goody two shoes kind of person but definitely is a good student tm and you know always shows up to class early sits in the front row does all my homework goes to bed by 10 p.m you know like like that kind of student very, very good at school, but not in the sort of snobby, I'm better than you vibe. Was always very humble about it, always willing to help other people with their homework. Would not let you copy my homework, but would help you, would offer to help you with the work. Would um, spend hours uh, helping my classmates with the work, explaining things if they didn't understand it. Um, somehow found time in all of this busy schedule to be mentored by Professor Tallis, doing lots of extra work with him, for him, etc. Um, basically, what I'm trying to illustrate here is that Faro is not one to talk back to authority. Um, and so you you watch as Faro like takes a deep breath and just says, respectfully, sir, um, where I come from, People in authority positions often know more than they're letting on. And honestly, I'm really scared for my friend's safety. And it really doesn't seem like you or the rest of the administration's doing enough or anything really to find her. I'm not sure what me or Renee would know that you don't already know. You all are much more learned than us. Your magic stronger. Years and years of practice at a level that I could only hope to one day achieve. I've told you everything I know. And we'll look over at you, Renee, and you... Almost seeing if you have anything else to add. Renee was just fully staring at Faro as they actually stood up to the headmaster, which was extremely shocking. Um, yeah, I know. <laughs> I think immediately after finishing talking, Faro like literally grabs your hand. I think, like the... out, like just. <laughs> The headmaster would see a smile just at the corner of Renee's lips and he very defiantly just shakes his head. What she said is what I know. And the headmaster looks between both of you and nods and just being, well, if you think of anything, um, please just let me know. Uh, for the meantime, we are going to be instituting a curfew on campus just until we make sure that everything is fine and everyone is safe and this is an isolated incident. What time? I almost said sundown, but that's not a time. Nope. <laughs> and <laughs> sundown is also happen. very early. It is also isn't something it? that... And also, happen. it's always, always sundown. sundown. So it's forever curfew. <laughs> forever uh, curfew. Hold on. Uh, it, it is of. It is essentially is like. It is around the same time. Generally, most of the dormitories have lights out, being. Like, nine at night. Or what we continually call night now. Yes. Fine. I don't know how anyone's going to get anything done, but I'll listen for now. No. 
thank you for coming to see me and giving me inf any information you had. Uh, you are free to go. Uh, and if you see your other two friends, please send them my way. And speaking of the other two, what are you two up to in the dorm right really now? Really quick, uh -huh. really quick, as we leave, um, if Renee walks out first, Faro is about to, like, like standing in the doorway, mm -hmm. turns around, just says, really, though, try the location thing. I can't do it, but I know you can. And we'll close the door. <laughs> So yes, back at the dorm. What is going on there? Meanwhile, back at the ranch. <laughs> uh, Caster has sat on the couch uh, and is kind of picking through the books um, that we picked up. I guess he's, he's just, he he's surfing through them, like their topics and stuff like that and kind of skimming the pages, but he, he's not really paying attention. His minds are his eyes are kind of a million miles away. Yeah, I think Tom spends a minute, like, just looking at the titles that Junie asked for, but drops it pretty much immediately. And will sigh and look at Caster and say, You cared about her, right? You care. About her, right? Juniper? Juni? Yeah, of course. Sweet girl. Very bright. Why? I heard something else when I was in the tavern, and I didn't have time to mention it, and I'm just... I'm worried that maybe Faro and now Renee are too close to everything else that's happening. That they're... I'm worried that they're getting distracted by everything else and they're going to lose sight of her. What's your hair? <sighs> We just, we need, I don't care about Talos. I don't care what happens to Talos. I don't care about this Akos either, this unbroken. It's, but we need to get him that book today, tomorrow, before Tom. What did you hear? They have... They're working... on... something. They're not... They don't want to... pause, put it on hold, just... because of the book. And I don't know what will happen if they try and... I mean, I don't understand alchemy. You know alchemy better than I do. I'm, I really don't, I promise. But I don't know what will happen if they try and go forward with whatever it is they're doing without it. And I reached out to her when we were in the library. I know that she's still alive or she was still alive when we found all of that blood and... What if they have her? What if... You think if we give them the book, they'll release her? I think if we give Talus the book, he... Whatever it is that he's doing for whatever reasons... I don't know. I don't care. I don't think he wanted to drag her into it. And if there's a 
plausible way for us <sighs> Akko said that they would deal with anyone that they would need to deal with anyone who knew about this and they're not going to let her go just because we give them the book but we could trade it for her we can't we know about it she knows about it what guarantee do we have however this does give me an idea listening what if we use the book to track them if we, and if we give it if we give and perhaps not the whole thing if what they need is the back but Pharaoh found then we just remove that give the book to them put a tracking spell on it and we followed that back to wherever they're keeping June. It could work, right? If that's the part that they need, I imagine that that's the first thing they would check for. But what if we... I mean, when I tried to make a copy of it, it was gibberish because I don't understand what's going on. But if Fodder did it, then they could maybe like change a line or something in a circle, change a word, and it wouldn't work, but it would look close enough, probably they would think, and we can track it and track them. Yes. Uh, I have a quick question for the people whose place this is. Do you have a window in your sitting room? Oh, probably. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, great. Because awesome, I've great. so this whole Not an time, ominous question. I've... I know. I, this whole time, I've just been picturing my freshman year dorm, which was this mm -hmm. situation where there was a living room, kitchenette, bathroom, and two bedrooms with Same. closed doors. Same. And um, the living room did have a window. It was small because the bigger oh. windows were in the bedrooms. Oh, Mine was all was windows, window. baby. <laughs> also, uh, Renee would have like sought a room with a window. Oh, of course. Yeah. Um, for the, the like, Caster and Tom, you kind of just hear tap tap. Tap, tap, tap. Oh no. At the window. I'm gonna mute. Who's that knocking on my chamber door? <laughs> um, I'll look at the window. Um, you see, uh, you see like a, uh, a bird there. It is, it is a jackdaw. Oh. And it appears to have like a note in its beak. That seems like a trap, doesn't it? I mean, everything does at this point, but. Might be for me. I'm house jacked off. I'm gonna go open the freaking window. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, there is a note, uh, and. This bird drops the note into you. If you hold out your hand, the bird drops the note. It's like a small little, yay, yay big folded piece of paper. Uh, and then flies off. Thank you, Charlie. Open the note, mm -hmm. read it. Uh, it says, bring the book tonight to... And it has an address on it. Is there an or else or? <laughs> no, but there's something else that falls into your hand as you. Oh, no. <laughs> a small lock of hair. Hmm. Does it match our friends? <laughs> You're sure, yeah, this looks like the mousy brown of Juniper. Caster sighs and looks at um, Tom and just goes, well, seems they've made up their mind. Uh, 
And I think this is about the same point that Faro, Faro and Renee arrive back at the apartment. But that is also a thing for next week and the final episode of the Mysteries of Ravenswood. Thank you all for coming along with us for screaming. Three. There's still one more episode, and who knows ah! what is going to happen. Uh, so yeah. Uh, hopefully it'll go better. <laughs> hopefully, uh, I am going to toss over to my cast, let you know where you could find their lovely faces all over the internet. And we'll start with you, Jazz. What up? My name's Jazz, also known as Cinder Scoria on Twitter. That's usually where you can find me hanging out. Um, what am I doing these days? So I have my usuals. We have um, Mist of Elixia on Tuesday nights. Um, we have the Arcane course should be coming in the next few weeks or possibly month or two when this starts airing um we are starting season three it's also our final season for the arcane Corps monster of the week podcast you should watch it because it's great um let's see i'm also in i'm going to be in a bunch of charity one shots um and events for pride so that's really exciting look out for that you can find all of the info when it is announced um coming up soon and um, I'm also, you can also just find me just around on Queen's Court Games and um, other places because I'm pretty prolific. Yeah, that's me. Hi. Uh, Jay? Hi, everybody. My name is Jay or Nala. Um, my pronouns are they, them. And uh, I am at Nala Wu on Twitter and at Nala Draws everywhere else if you want to see my artwork, including a TikTok where I have made some videos of myself as Faro, as well as videos of myself in lots of other character cosplays. So if you like that kind of thing and you want, uh, I'll be generous and call it bonus content. <laughs> <laughs> of my characters um you can go check out my tiktok which is nala draws uh i am a full-time art director and illustrator i work in ttrpgs and i'm currently the art director for all the witches as well as some other unannounced projects um I'm playing with the ends of this hair. <laughs> um, what else am I on? Uh, if you like, uh, if you want to find me in another actual play, I am a cast member of Itawan by Night. Uh, we stream on Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Bad House RPG's Twitch channel. Itawan by Night is the uh, it's a Vampire the Masquerade show featuring a first and only all Asian cast playing VTM on stream. Our game takes place in Seoul, South Korea and is unlike any other VTM game or setting you've ever seen before. Um, we are in our second season. If you want to catch up and watch our first season, that is available on YouTube if you search Itawan by Night. It's on going crit rpgs youtube um but again for season two we are on bad house rpgs twitch channel and those episodes are also getting uploaded to youtube as um trimmed down vods as well um besides that um i'm i'm staring at my calendar right now because i know this is pre-recorded so i'm like what is what else is gonna be coming out around this time i can't think of anything but if uh if oh i'm in something else for pride month but i'm not gonna announce it because i'm not sure we haven't jay from the past hasn't even had session zero yet so actually i literally don't know what it is i've said yes to a thing i don't know what it is fair, anyways fair. follow my twitter that's a plan that's that's the best place to keep up with all of my stuff um super excited for this finale the big fear big fear uh, i'm gonna pass it over to whoever the heck is after me <laughs> kai it's me kai hi everybody uh i'm kai i have been renee uh you can find me on all social media platforms as estelle of imladris uh, let's see here. What's going on with me? I have, I had the sincere pleasure of being the costume designer on a web series called The Party. It is about people who play TTRPGs. You can find all episodes streaming for free on YouTube, and you can follow at Party Web Series on all social media platforms for all of the ongoing news about all of the things going on for the party. So go check that out. Um, I am also a producer and performer for the Lore Brewery, where you can you can find us at Lore Brewery. It's a podcast. You can find us on all podcasting 
places anywhere you find a podcast. Um, right now, we are in the middle of our first long adventure called Far, Far Away. It's a 5e fairy tale adventure where we take familiar stories told in strange and new and largely frightening ways. Uh, so you can go check that out um, around now. I have no idea how many episodes have been out, but it'll be a lot. Um, it's been ongoing for a while, so uh, catch up and enjoy all of the fairy tale and fae drama. And then last Ooh. but not least, the weekend after this episode airs should be June 24th, where you can find me on the premiere of Campaign 2 of Transplanner RPG, a all-trans people of color-led actual play show as we explore a non-colonial anti-Orientalist anti -orientalist multiverse Ooh. starting on Saturday, every yeah. Saturday. Yeah. Uh, so excited. So please come check out the premiere. We've got some really fun stuff we've been cooking up and it is not to be missed. Uh, and Alyssa. Hi, y'all. I'm Alyssa. You can find me on Twitter at a disaster queer. On Wednesday nights, you can find me playing Mist Lost at the Mandy's Twitch channel, which is a very gay, uh, very sad <laughs> homebrew 5e D D game. Um, you can also find me on Goblets and Gays with Aubrey, which is a podcast. Other podcasts are um, an Unwavering Force, which is a Star Wars post Order 66, like podcast BIPOC led uh, or all BIPOC queer and trans led um, it's been super fun so far I'm really excited about it and also starting in July I will be GMing a game of Spire the City Must Fall on Bad House RPG so that is something else to look forward to and that's me yes sorry <laughs> Uh, no, I forgot one thing. I'm so sorry. Oh, what did you I forget? It really, I forgot that we just got Ark so far. Oh, oh yes, good. Oh, can it, you see? You it? There disappeared. It is, there, it is. there it is. There it is. You're good. There it is. You're there. popping you're in good. and out. Phobic. See your eyes. Um, it needs to see your eyes. <laughs> yep. This is being Ace. It is an all Ace anthology that features um, stories of all genres written by asexual authors with uh, emphasis on asexual characters. Character. So if you want to see things that I write, because I write sometimes, you can check this out. It should be out. Actually, I don't know what day, but in October, it should be out in October, but you can add it on Goodreads and NetGalley now. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and to wrap things up, I am Aubrey. I have been your GM. Uh, and you can find me everywhere on the internet at Magazine Cosplay. And I have a very stacked June. Uh, you have... You're going to have me over here for one more week running uh, this. Uh, you can also, uh, on Thursdays, Queen's Court is also doing Lighthearted with the uh, Tabula Sono. Uh, that is, it has been a blast to come for uh, some 80s magical stuff where I I literally, my I didn't intend for this character to be such a disaster, uh, but I am playing the ultimate disaster I think last episode I beat a vampire with a or <laughs> uh, and you can catch me every Friday over on Hallet Haven Studios playing in Wayfarer their hunter the reckoning v5 game uh, and also on Saturdays you can catch me over on Vancouver by night playing in bonfire for the lost as a very edgy Lissandra. Uh Ooh. And there's a few other things. Goblets and Gays. You can go check that out. Uh, you can also check out Ash and Snow from Skull's Tale Production. That should be out by now. Uh, and that is just uh, a bunch of Pathfinder nerds playing through the Gatewalkers adventure. Uh, it is a lot of fun and very spooky. Uh, so, yes, uh, I will now say good night. And I cannot wait for this final episode where everything comes to a head and it's gonna be so good for who <laughs> for everyone you sure you sure yeah <laughs> we're gonna die really? yeah. okay we'll it's see fine. everybody then it's fine okay bye <laughs>